Hey everyone, we've just launched the BeatBuddy Loader, a streamlined application for basic file management on your BeatBuddy's SD card. This isn't a replacement for the BeatBuddy Manager, which we're still working on improvements for, but is rather a tool for quickly adding or rearranging songs and folders on your BeatBuddy. Let's see how it works. First, to download the BeatBuddy Loader software on Mac or Windows, click the respective link in the description below. You can also find the download links on the Singular Sound website in the BeatBuddy support section. We'll be covering each installation next, starting with Mac. You'll be adding a DMG file to your Applications folder. To do that, first open the downloaded file, then simply drag the BeatBuddy Loader's file into the Applications folder using the pop-up window. This will move the installed file to the Applications section within the Finder app. Once you're done, just click the BeatBuddy Loader icon to start it up. To install the BeatBuddy Loader on Windows, open your Downloads folder and double-click to run the installer. Windows will ask you if you want to allow the program to make changes. Click Yes on this pop-up. Now you'll see a screen asking where you would like the program to be installed. By default, it's set to Program Files x86 slash Singular Sound slash BeatBuddy Loader. Once you've ensured the program will be installed into the desired folder, click Next. The installer will now ask which Start Menu folder you would like to place the shortcuts in. By default, it's set to Singular Sound. Again, press Next when you're satisfied with the folder choice. At this point, the loader is ready to install, and just needs you to click Install. Once done, press Finish to exit the setup. The loader is now installed and can be found in your Start menu. Now open the loader. It's important to note that the loader modifies your SD card directly, and as such, will only work when you have an SD card inserted to your computer. If your computer does not have an SD card slot, you will need to get an SD card adapter and plug it into your USB port. We've linked a good option on Amazon in the description below. To the left, you'll see the Edit SD Card option. You can see what this does in the bullet points within the tile. Clicking anywhere on the tile will open the Choose Device pop-up. Upon clicking Select Device, it'll list all removable drives like any SD cards, external hard drives, or USBs. Select your BeatBuddy SD card. If you don't see yours listed, ensure that the SD card is fully inserted and that the lock on the physical SD card is not engaged. We do not recommend using the loader to edit anything other than an SD card. Once chosen, if you see a pop-up that indicates your SD card is not initialized or corrupted, but you've been using it just fine with the BeatBuddy or even the BeatBuddy Manager, click Not Just Yet. It's possible that you have firmware or other files left on the SD card. In this case, open your SD card in your file manager and find the MLO and app files. Deleting these two files will enable the loader to successfully read your SD card. New versions of the BeatBuddy firmware won't leave these leftover files on the SD card, and it's required to use the latest BeatBuddy firmware to use the BeatBuddy loader, so now is a great time to update if you haven't already. We've included links to the latest BeatBuddy firmware in the description below. If the SD card loads correctly, you'll be brought to the Edit Project view. This screen will handle all of the SD card management in the BeatBuddy loader. At the top left, you have the Home button. Then beneath that, you have tabs for songs, drum sets, and playlists. You can also cycle through the tabs by pressing the Tab key on your keyboard. Next, you've got the Project Stats section, which contains basic information about your currently loaded project. The main header represents your project's name, which you can edit by double tapping the text, renaming, and pressing Enter. You can also rename the project by pressing Command R for Mac and Control R for PC. Below there, you'll find the SD card connected notation. This shows you the source of the drive or SD card you're working from. You can see exactly when your project was last updated, as well as the number of songs and drum sets contained in the project. Lastly, the memory header offers a reference of how much space has been used on your SD card and how much is still available. In the top right corner, you'll notice a three dot menu. When clicked, it'll give you three options, make a backup, restore from backup, and export all folder and drum sets. Here, you'll be able to create a backup version of your current project by clicking Make a Backup. You can also make a backup by pressing Command-B for Mac and Control-B for PC. The program will ask you to select which folder you'd like the backup to be located. 
Once selected, the program will begin making a backup file, which will be stored as a project folder containing all the content and the BBP file. To load a backup, click Restore from a backup in that same three-dot menu. You'll be shown a confirmation pop-up. Once you confirm, you'll be asked to select which file to restore from. After selecting it, the app will take care of the rest. To export all project folders and drum sets, click on the option in the drop-down menu or press Command plus E on Mac and Control plus E on PC. This will create an export of all content in a more human-friendly format that allows for easy importing of content into the BeatBuddy Manager or into other projects on a different SD card. To the right of the Project Info section is where you'll see the songs, drum sets, or playlists in your project, depending on the tab you have selected. In the case of the songs view, folders are indicated with a side-facing arrow. When clicked, it rotates facing downwards, indicating that the folder has been expanded and showing you all the songs in that folder. Songs and folders can be reorganized by dragging and dropping. Each folder has a three dot drop down menu, which allows you to rename, export, create playlists, and delete the folder. You can also bring this drop down menu up by right clicking anywhere on the folder. New folders can be added by clicking the New Folder button in the upper right. You can also create a new folder by pressing Command and N on Mac or Control and N on PC. It'll ask you to name the folder and then it'll be added to the bottom of the list. To the right of the New Folder button, you'll find the Add File button. When clicked, it allows you to add any song, PBF, zipped song or zipped pbf file. These are the files for the BeatBuddy songs and folders respectively. To add a new song to a folder, press the plus icon in the folder's right. This will open File Explorer, asking you to select which song to add. Once selected, the song will load and you'll find it at the bottom of the folder. To the right of each song is a three dot drop down menu, which when clicked gives you four options. Rename, export, add song to a playlist, and delete. Just like with the folders, this drop down menu can be brought up by right clicking. The BeatBuddy loader also enables you to create and manage playlists. Playlists are a new way to organize songs for a show without having to copy songs into a new folder on the BeatBuddy. To add a song to a playlist, you need to first have a playlist created. Let's do that by selecting the Playlist tab, then clicking Add Playlist. Now we can rename or delete the playlist either by selecting the three-dot menu or right-clicking anywhere on the tile. Let's rename it now. Now let's head back to the Songs view to add some songs. Find the songs that you want to add, and then either click that three dot drop down menu or right click and click add song to a playlist. This will bring up a window where you can select which playlist to add it to. You'll receive a pop-up confirmation once it's been added. If instead you wanted to create a playlist out of an existing folder, simply use the three dot drop down menu or right click and click create playlist from folder. A pop-up confirmation will again be shown, showing that that was successful. Let's head back to the playlist tab. Here you can rearrange songs, just like in the songs tab, within your playlists. You can also use the three dot drop down menu or right click to remove any song from the playlist. The BeatBuddy supports up to 17 playlists. To clear all playlists at once, press the Delete All Playlists button in the top right. Do note that this action is not undoable. Next, let's go to the Drum Sets tab and look at the options we have there. Where we saw Add Playlist and Add Folder in the other tabs, we now see Add Drum Set. Clicking it enables you to add a DRM or zipped DRM file, which are the file types that the BeatBuddy uses for drum sets. You can rearrange your drum sets by dragging and dropping. 
And just like with the other moves, there's a three dot menu, or you can right click to rename, export, or delete any drum set. And that about wraps up the edit SD card section. Let's return home. The middle tile in the main menu lets you download all of the BeatBuddy's default content onto your SD card. This is the content that came with your new BeatBuddy, so it's useful if you lost your original SD card. This only takes a few clicks. First, select the tile, and you'll be given the option to choose which drive you'd like to load the content onto. Remember, this process will rewrite all of the content on your SD card, so you'll be given the option to create a backup of your drive as it is before the BeatBuddy loader makes any changes. You do this by clicking the backup checkbox in the pop-up prior to hitting continue. Once you hit continue, you'll be given the option to select where you'd like to back up the content. Now it'll begin backing up your project and downloading the new default library onto it. Keep in mind, you'll want to make sure you're connected to the internet before doing this. If you don't have internet access, you can still load a copy of the default content using the load full project option from the home screen, which we'll go over momentarily. Now you can edit your SD card and project by clicking OK. You can also remove the SD card from your computer and pop it into a BeatBuddy to get playing instantly. The third and final option on the main menu screen is to load full project. This allows you to upload any project, including personal content, to your SD card using either a BBP or zipped BBP file. This is the file type that the BeatBuddy uses for full projects. Just as you did for loading default content, you'll want to select the drive you want the content loaded to. Then, you'll want to decide whether or not to make a backup of the current content on the SD card. Next, make sure you're looking for the right file type in your system browser. Usually, you can narrow which file type you're viewing via the drop-down menu in the system browser. This method of loading content onto your SD card does not require an internet connection. You can purchase, download, and import any premium library content directly from the premium library website as zipped premium library files to make this process easier. Once again, you'll see the download process on your screen, and you'll receive a confirmation when the process is complete. This finishes up our BeatBuddy Loader tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more tutorials, tips, and news from our channel, and take a look at the videos YouTube's recommending for you now. Keep rocking.